We are back. Hope you had a good weekend. I know I did, but hey, it's Monday. It's time to time to go back to work. Well, we don't work real hard around here. You know that. That's our Monday tradition. 25th day of March, 2024. I'm Dan Koontz. This is Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Beautiful morning. Hope you had a chance to see the full moon. Already three full moons this year. That's why we have Easter Sunday coming up. It was beautiful. It was really nice. Fairly clear skies, 36 degrees. Don't get used to the clear skies as the day progresses. The clouds will be rolling in. We'll be dry, but pretty cloudy. Lots of sunshine Tuesday, but quite windy, and then very chilly and rainy on Wednesday. But Easter weekend looks really good. Temperatures in the 60s with lots of sunshine, but we're going to have a lot of unsettled weather most of this week until we get to the weekend, and then it's going to be beautiful. Forecast details always take precedence here, and we will do that first out of the gate once we get through everything else, including the news, sports, Looking good for Gonzaga. They're in the Sweet 16 again. That's a tradition. Gonzaga women uh, play today for a chance to go to the women's Sweet 16. As you know by now, the Cougars, their season came to an end. We'll have highlights of all of those. Wenatchee Wild locked up the number four seed in the Western Conference of the WHL playoffs. We'll preview that with a nice hard-fought victory over Victoria. That's when they clinched it. That was on a Friday night. Lost to Everett on Saturday, but we'll have all of that stuff. A lot of sports. Uh, and in the back half of the program, CMI Orchards and Royal Family Farming have got together to uh, start out the Soil Center. And you're going to hear from Bob Mass, the CEO of CMI Orchards and the president of the Royal Family Farming. Uh, that's Austin Aldred. You'll hear from them in the back half of the program. Let's go. Let's start with our tour. I don't like to waste any time when we got cameras that look like this this morning. Beautiful sunrise this morning. It already came and went. 6.52, about 10 minutes ago. Sunset tonight, 7.22. That's 12 hours and 29 minutes of daylight. We're still gaining about three minutes of daylight per day. That's going to start slowing down a little bit as we get deeper and deeper into March and say goodbye to March and welcome April one week from today. Camera two, let's head on up to Badger Mountain. Take a look at the continuing receding snow line. Nice view there. You can uh, you can see it's a little hazy. You can see some maybe some of the clouds that are heading our way are already starting to to bank themselves up over the Cascades. They're going to be coming our way. We're going to be dry today, but we set a record uh, rainfall on Saturday. It rained on Saturday as they predicted. Uh, we had 0.43 inches of rain, which was a new record for Saturday, March 23rd. That was a lot, almost a half an inch of rain came down on Saturday. It was pretty wet. Indeed, it was a good day to stay inside. It was also pretty chilly. It was only 51 on Saturday. We hit 60 on Sunday. The Omi Garden camera, not open yet, but they're still working on Omi. They had a good winter. They didn't have to worry about uh, a lot of trees or a lot of dead bushes and stuff like that. So they're gonna get, uh, they're gonna get Omi turned around pretty quickly for the spring season. Get from our Omi Garden camera, looking over to the East Wenatchee area. And up to Lake Chelan we go. On the lower of our two cameras, on the Chelan Butte, can't quite see Chelan, but you can see a pretty good swath of the North Shore of Lake Chelan. And it doesn't look like they have a cloud to be seen up there. Let's see right now in Chelan, ooh, it's chilly, it's 30. In Chelan, it's 36 here in the Wenatchee Valley. Since we're almost into April, and they sent this out to us a couple of days ago, the Climate Prediction Center, what does April look like for the entire month? Looks something like this. As you can see, for the temperatures, we're likely gonna see above normal temperatures for the north central Washington area for the month of April. Above normal temperatures, at least a better than 50-50 chance of that. About a 60 to 70 percent chance of seeing above normal temperatures for the month of April. As far as precipitation is concerned, about normal. A little below normal in the Puget Sound area here in the Wenatchee Valley, we have about a 50-50 chance of seeing what we would normally see precipitation-wise for the month of April. So if the Climate Prediction Center's Predictions turn out okay, and they're usually pretty good about this. We're looking at a warmer than normal, but about average for precipitation for the month of April. From the National Weather Service, we're gonna be all over the board this week. Clouds will be increasing as the day progresses. High of about 55 degrees, which is exactly normal. Our normal high is 55 degrees, so it's gonna be cooler than yesterday's 60. That's for sure. Clouds will be with us all night tonight. Dry, 39 for the overnight low. Tomorrow, lots of sunshine, but quite windy at times. We'll see a wind out of the west about 15 miles an hour, gusts in the 20 mile an hour range. So it's gonna be breezy on Tuesday, just about normal. Lots of sunshine, high of 56. Clouds roll back in. Wind will be picking up in intensity on Tuesday night. 
36 for the overnight low because right behind this wind is a pretty good system. Going to give us a lot of rain, a lot of afternoon rain. On Wednesday, we have an 80% chance of rain. Snow level Wednesday is going to start out at 2,300 feet. It's eventually going to go up, but Wednesday looks to be pretty wet, as does Wednesday night. Thursday, we dry out a little bit with some sunshine at a high of 56, and then here comes some pretty nice weather for Easter weekend. Sunshine at 58 to 63, and on Easter Sunday proper, sunshine and 67. Just about perfect. All right, that's your forecast. Just about six minutes after the hour. What happened over the weekend? A lot. News is next. You're watching Wake Up on Anchee Valley, Monday edition on the NCW Life Channel. Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents The Magic of Manson. Welcome to Navar Cooley Tasting Room in downtown Manson. You're invited to stop by, relax, and enjoy a sample of our longer aged wines. You will taste the difference from the very first sip. Tipsy Canyon is proud to introduce their latest lineup of new wines. The Garvins will make you feel right at home as spring unfolds across the Chelan Valley. Come up to the Manson Hills and experience the magic for yourself. Most of us are in touch with the internet in one way or another all day long. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, and in touch. Localtel cares about your connection. We know strong, reliable internet with your choice of speed makes life better. If you need fast, reliable internet, or maybe an upgrade, or you just have questions, connect with us by visiting localtel.com or call 509-888-8888 today. The Honda you want is here. Drive in the moment with the rugged and capable Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot. Find your adventure with great offers now available on the Honda you want. All from the 2023 Kelly Blue Books KBB.com Best Value Brand. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. A lot of sunshine, 36 degrees, but the clouds will be rolling in today. It'll be mostly cloudy tonight, sunny and windy. Quite windy on Tuesday, rain on Wednesday, then we start warming up with lots of sunshine. Just in time for the weekend. Same minutes after the hour, one Anchee man is in custody after a gunfire incident Saturday night in the 1100 block of Red Apple Road. Police say multiple shots were fired, but nobody was injured. One Anchee police say Jamie Camarino Zaragoza, 35 years old, arrested just over two hours after the incident was first reported. That was at 944 on Saturday night just outside an apartment complex one block south of Wenatchee High School. He remains in jail, by the way, on suspicion of first-degree assault. Police Captain Edgar Reinfeld said the call initially reported 10 to 11 people involved in a fight outside the apartment complex, but quickly escalated to reports of shots being fired. Responders found nobody at the scene who needed medical help, but several semi-automatic rifle casings were found at the scene. During the search of the area, nearby residents were warned to shelter in place. Reinfeld says phone calls from witnesses proved crucial in locating the suspect. They eventually found him about midnight on the back porch of a nearby home. They used a heat sensing drone from the Chelan County Sheriff's Office to find him. Police are seeking a charge against Camarina of first degree assault. Not one single speaker supported the Wenatchee School Board's possible decision to close elementary school. They had their first, Columbia Elementary School, they had their first public hearing on a Thursday night, the first of two that the school district plans before the board has to make a final decision on May 14th. The concerns expressed at the hearing are not unfamiliar to the board. Many of the speakers, including Columbia teacher Cameron Wiggins, echoed the same thing parents, teachers, and community members have voiced for the last couple of months, urging other options besides closing Columbia.
Up until the last school board meeting, I didn't feel like there was much transparency in the decision-making process regarding other options available. A doctor would do a better job weighing the pros and cons of alternative treatments with the patient before deciding to cut off an important body part. And while it's a process that sometimes is necessary, it wouldn't be done hastily unless it was absolutely necessary to save a patient's life. So here you are hearing us, the arm that's about to be amputated, asking you to weigh the consequences that this is going to have on the rest of our body very carefully. Has the district convinced you that this decision is necessary to save the district as a whole? Because it hasn't convinced me. I may not have the same level of responsibility as the district administration. I don't get paid as much. I don't have the same as I don't have as much education and I don't have nearly as much decision making power. However, I am an important stakeholder in this decision and I do not recommend closing Columbia Elementary. The second public hearing, by the way, is scheduled for April 18th, also at the Wenatchee High School Commons from 6 to 9 p.m. Well, if a third vehicular bridge is ever built over the Columbia River right here in the Wenatchee Valley, it ain't going to come cheap. The Chelan Douglas Transportation Council recently released a study looking at four potential locations for a new bridge all the way from the Malaga Rock Island area to the south to the heart of downtown to the north. Cost estimates for the different alternatives range from anywhere from $156 million to $326 million given current prices and labor. Transportation planners and community groups have identified a third bridge in addition to the Odo Bastion and Senator George Seller Bridge as a key priority for local commerce and public safety. You can read and give your input on the survey at the Transportation Council's website, chelan-douglas.org. And House Bill 1974 recently became law in Washington State. What does it do? It will reduce the amount of days a funeral home has to hold on to an unclaimed body. Wenatchee Valley funeral homeowners, including Jamin Moeller, owner of Brookside Funeral Home and president of the Washington State Funeral Directors Association, stands in support of that bill. House Bill 1974 aims to change our state regulation from the required 90 days that funeral homes are expected to hold a body of someone who is unclaimed by their family from 90 days to 45 days. So what that means is if somebody passes away and has no family or is unclaimed, current Washington state law says the funeral home needs to hold that body for 90 days prior to disposition, prior to burial or most often cremation. And so House Bill 1974, in my opinion, increases the dignity for those who have no one. So do you feel that there has been an increase in unclaimed bodies coming to funeral homes? And if so, why do you think that is? I wouldn't say there's been a spike. I would say there's been a general trend. If you back up in our profession 80 to 100 years, obviously folks kind of stayed in the same community and had family within that community. Now that we're a little more uh, diverse and people are a little more uh, able to travel and be in other communities, maybe when they pass or maybe relocate to another town where there's less family for them, uh, there has been uh, a, probably a steady increase of that. Uh, and so this house bill not only restores the, the dignity of those folks who have no one, but also assist funeral homes in being able to care for that uh, individual at a, at a more reasonably timed situation. Has there been an upward trend in the number of unclaimed remains held at funeral homes? I would say no. I think that um, it's been an issue that's been dealt with by our profession for many years. And it's been an ongoing issue that, um, although it's there, I wouldn't say it's maybe the biggest issue that our profession faces. The reduction from 90 to 45 days is a benefit to the process. In neighboring states, there are actually lesser periods of time than 45 days, in some cases 10 to 20 days. So the 45 days, although good, um, could even be further improved upon maybe in the future. But I do see it as a great benefit and advantage. As the president of the Washington State Funeral Directors Association, we get feedback from our membership frequently about what we can do to improve uh, the profession at the state level, legislatively. And so it has been something that we have talked about within our association for a period of time. And 
so I support that not selfishly just for Brookside, but for my colleagues throughout the state, and that is our job as the state association to care for our membership and do what we can not only for the funeral homes, but for those who pass away. Where is the bill at now? What's its current status and what's left for it to really just become official? So earlier this week, uh, we were invited to uh, the Capitol where we were present when Governor Jay Inslee signed this into law. So that was a, a great experience. And there is a, a waiting period from the time he signs it until it becomes effective. I believe that becomes effective sometime in June. And so it passed with bipartisan and unanimous support both in the House and in the Senate. So it was not a controversial issue. Everybody knows everybody deserves dignity. And so uh, we were grateful that uh, Inslee signed that this week and so we just anticipate its implementation in just a couple of months. And that's what's making news on this Monday. And if you're interested in what's going on, in North Central Washington and the Wenatchee Valley, we fill the bill with our evening news. Grant Olson in the anchor chair, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock, the news. At 5, 6, and 10, and it's also going to be up and running on our Facebook page at about 5 o'clock, our homepage, and CWLife.com, our YouTube page, and on our app. And if you haven't downloaded our app, that's how you go about doing it right there. Pick up your phone, do the old QR dance, and it's down the road you go. And if there's something out there that warrants our attention, you get a hold of us. Send us an email, news at ncwlife.com. Good weekend for Gonzaga, men and ladies. Not so much for the Cougars and the Kraken. I don't know. Sports is next. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. I know how you feel. Come on out to Blueberry Hills, you'll have a great time. We've got excellent food, a feed on the furniture kind of experience, and we won't hustle you out of your table. If you want a real farm experience, make a trek to Manson to Blueberry Hills, where you sit, you pick, you eat, and you visit. So come on out and see what all the fuss is about. Blueberry Hills in Manson, it's where the world is coming to. Global Car Care has the best customer service in the Valley. From the moment you walk in the door, their goal is to help you stay on the road. So you can keep doing what's important to you. Global Car Care certified ASE mechanics stand behind your automotive repairs. At Confluence Health, our mission is clear, to provide exceptional care for our community. We believe in healthcare that's personal and local because we're just like you, members of this great community. We are Confluence. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. We are Confluence. Nineteen minutes after the hour in sports, Gonzaga broke open a back and forth game with a 15 to nothing run on Saturday. They pulled away from Kansas for an 89 to 68 win. They extend their streak of trips to the Sweet 16 to nine in a row. Hickman picks up his dribble, trying to feed it inside to Greg. Greg working against Adams off the window. Big Ben. Time he sets the pick for Nevar. He's going to get it back. He's going to oh, feed wow. it underneath the wide open. <laughs> Nevar will take it. Didn't get it though. Greg, great offensive rebound. And he might get it with an old fashioned three. Drop with great offensive execution by Kansas on that play. He with a wide open jump with the Furfin. Greg feeds inside to Watson. Good jump by Watson. Watson cuts right down the lane. 
And all the way to the rack is Nebhart. His first basket. Zags looking to run away with his first four minutes of the half. EK does it on the other end. Coach Hugh needs a timeout. Defensively, they're getting shredded. And this, and this is where you see the Kansas is really missing the color. Obviously, he's at 18 points per game. As we see, Hickman knocked down another triple. That took a little bit maybe of a power dribble, carved out some more space. Jayhawks are over for their last nine from the floor. And EK puts it on the deck, spins over Dickinson. Fun for Kansas fans in the second half, but we've had some great basketball. Other than that, and the final, 80. So the fifth seeded Bulldogs now get to take on number one seed Purdue. That'll be Friday in Detroit, 439 on TNT and TBS, I should say, and True TV. As far as the Cougs are concerned, they were tied at halftime, but then they simply ran out of gas in the second half. A lot of turnovers, a lot of one-shot possessions, and eventually Washington State falls to Iowa State 67 to 56 in the round of 32. Wells open for three. It's good. It's raining threes for Jalen Wells. So right before his senior year, so he was under-recruited. That's why he went to Sonoma State. He strides through the defense. Off the glass, it's good. Count the bucket. Here's Gilbert, bounce pass to a cutting. Watson, he gets control. Lipsy with the shot clock at four. Fadeaway three, and the answer. 39-35, under 13 to play here in the second half. Jones for three. Yes! Gilbert leaves it to Momchinovic for three. It's good! Good fill behind. Now into the paint, leads it down low to King, and it's blocked away by Jones. Shot clock did not reset, doesn't matter. Here comes Wells. Curtis Jones dribbling away, trying to stay away from the foul. There he goes, Robert Jones. Bam! Still a good year for the Cougars. Coach Kyle Smith, he's going to be a hot property come the offseason. As far as the Lady Bulldogs are concerned, Yvonne E. Jim had 25 points, 14 rebounds. Number four seed Gonzaga overcomes a slow start. Rolled past UC Irvine, 75-56 to in the first round of the women's NCAA tournament. Kaylee Truong added 16 points. The Zags shooting 62% in the second half. Good hands and footwork underneath. She's got eight right at her season average. Long ball, strong. Says Kaylin. She actually mouths the words. <laughs> Rimming out. Great Ejim. block out. Runs the floor. Egypt on both ends. You bet. If you dribble it down in the corners, they're going to try to trap you. Wide open. Kaylee Trong hits it. Great pass out by Ejim from the corner. Herself down on the baseline and a pass. Normally that gets trapped. She finds the three point shooter and Trong's ready and, and loaded up to shoot. Kaylee Trong. And now Egypt, baseline, so quick. What a finish. She said. Egypt, deep, fades away, hits, and she's fired up on her keister and letting the world know with a big roar. And so she gets the ball. She's going to drive it, make somebody else have to make a play on her. Next up for Gonzaga, tonight at 7.30, they'll take on number five seed Utah. You can watch that on ESPN2. Well, the Kraken's losing streak is now eight games. Montreal rolled to a 5-1 victory last night in Seattle. I'm not going to show you highlights. There's nothing to see. Seattle has either been shut out or held to just one goal in six of those losses. They'll take on Anaheim tomorrow at home. Games that don't count over the weekend. The Mariners beat the White Sox on Saturday 8-2. Then they tied yesterday with the Cubs because, again, the games don't count. Mariners are in San Diego to take on the Padres in exhibition baseball today. And then tomorrow they get Wednesday off and then opening day at T-Mobile Park against the Red Sox on Thursday. As far as the Wenatchee Wild is concerned, they locked down a fourth place finish in the Western Division of the Western Hockey League Friday night. A physical 4-2 win over the Victoria Royals. Carter Profoski netted his first ever hat trick and we thank the first ever hat trick ever for a wild defenseman. Pass it ahead on left wing. Wood steps over the line, throws it to the right point. Here's a chance. Fluker, a drop pass for Iso Guy. Shot on goal and it's in the net. The Wenatchee Wild have opened the scoring here as Iso Guy threw it towards the net and Friesen was there to tip it past the glove side of Braden Holtz. It's, it's batted onto G, the net minder. 
also played and allowed seven goals on 26 Royal shots back on Wednesday, but their number one is still out. And this puck is in the net on a funny hop. And the Wild have a 2-0 lead as the puck was on a dump and hit the partition. Hooked out by Brown, Victoria's back for it. Kipke, advance on left wing, Chris passing here by the Royals for Hogan, Evenson back to Scott to the man in front, and G comes up with a huge save, robbing Reggie Newman on the far side. Vulnerability is something they gotta try and take advantage of. Yeah, early in the first period was all blocker. All blocker, and they've been... And a centering feed here, and it's oh. batted out of the air by Prasovsky, and he's got two, and now the lead's been extended to three for the Wild early in the third. They loaded up a little bit, and yeah. And Whoa. a goal off the faceoff, and prasovsky has got three. A hat trick for the defenseman restored. That was Friday night. They knew they could do no worse than fourth, so on Saturday, they pretty much rested. All of the starters, Everett beat them on Saturday, 6-2. But we're good to go. The WHL playoffs, the first round in the best-of-seven series, begins in Wenatchee on Friday night. Kelowna, the Rockets. The number five seed take on the number four seed Wenatchee Wild 7 p.m. on Friday, 6 p.m. on Saturday. They travel and then the first two games in Kelowna Tuesday and Wednesday of next week at 7.05. And again, this is a best of seven series, so they'll go back and forth if games five, six and seven are necessary. Prep soccer scoreboard from our friends at Les Schwab. Eastmont, no problems with Moses Lake on Friday. Eight to nothing. Sunnyside beat one Anchi down in Sunnyside. Three to one. Afraid I got the better of Prosser. Liberty Bell just snuck by Omac on the pitch. Prep baseball scoreboard. They played on Friday. and It's a good thing they did because they wouldn't have been able to play on Saturday. Eisenhower and Eastmont split a doubleheader. Moses Lake rolled all over Sunnyside in a doubleheader. Afraida got the uh, uh, East Valley beat Afraida in a doubleheader in the first game. Afraida came back and won the second game. Quincy got by Warden. Prep softball scoreboard. Eastmont sweeps a doubleheader from Eisenhower. Riverside took care of Omac and Deer Park took care of Omac. They had a lot of rainouts uh, in both baseball and softball on Saturday because, well, it rained a half an inch. And those are just some of the games that people are playing. At 27 minutes after the hour for the obscure holiday, today is Na National Medal of Honor Day. And those are the Medal of Honors that you see there left to right. It's the Medal of Honor for the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. Uh, the Navy was the first. They started doing Medal of Honors in 1861 during the Civil War. The Army followed suit a couple of years later in 1863. 3,506 individuals have won. The Medal of Honor, it is the highest award any member of the military can receive. There's no higher medal. Um, only one woman has ever received the Medal of Honor. She was a surgeon in, for the Union Army in, world, in the Civil War, Mary Edwards Walker, the only woman ever to win a Medal of Honor. The only president to receive a Medal of Honor was Ted, Teddy Roosevelt, and he, had a, he was dead when he got his, and they awarded his posthumously. The youngest Medal of Honor winner, was just 11 years old, again, the Civil War. His name is Willie Johnston. The vast majority, over 40% of all the Medal of Honors that have ever been awarded were awarded during the American Civil War to Union soldiers. Medal of Honor, the highest award anybody in the military can get. It is 28 minutes after the hour. Today in history, it has often been described as the most beautiful city in the world, and it very well may be. Happy birthday to Venice. Venice is 1,603 years old today. Again, almost anybody who's ever been there will tell you it's a remarkable, remarkable city. Uh, Venice was not a part of Italy until 1866. For almost its entire existence, Venice was an independent state. They didn't join Italy until uh, 1866. There are, of course, no cars in Venice. There are 170 canals, 472 bridges, and about 120 islands, some of them pretty sizable, some of them no bigger than a volleyball court. Venice, considered the most beautiful city in the world, celebrates her birthday today. They're loving Venice to death, of course. They're working on it, but Venice has some serious problems. And it's, uh, a lot of it is man-made problems. Happy birthday to Venice. And 113 years ago today, the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire in Greenwich Village in New York City claimed the lives of 146 people. As we roll the footage, the just incredible. It was a Saturday. These people worked under the most awful circumstances, most of them immigrant teenagers. Do we have the footage to, to roll um, from this date? It was a Saturday. Nobody really knows what started the fire. It could have been a match, could have been a cigarette. 
62 of the 146 workers either jumped or fell to their deaths. The others died from burned to death, smoke inhalation. That's just, that's just stunning. The doors to the stairwells and the exits were locked. The idea was to keep the, the seamstresses from taking unauthorized breaks to reduce theft and to keep union organizers out so they simply couldn't get out. Most of the workers could not escape from the burning building. The ones who did escape were able to go across the alleyway to a building on the other side. The only available fire escape they didn't build correctly. It could not handle the load of people crowded on it. It collapsed, which caused many more to die. 146 people died and it changed America labor law forever. The Triangle Shirt Waste Factory Fire. Birthdays. Norman Borlaug may have saved the lives of more people than anybody who ever lived. He developed the semi-dwarf high-yield disease-resistant wheat, wheat that could be harvested before it got too tall, fell over, and couldn't use anymore. He came up with it, and it basically saved the lives, they think, of over a billion people from starvation. When wheat is the staple of your diet, you got to eat it when you can eat it. Norman Borlaug, a great humanitarian, won a Nobel Prize. Thanks, Norman. Way to go, buddy. He was born in the state in 1914. Howard Cosell. I always liked Howard Cosell. A lot of people just couldn't stand him. He was egotistical. Uh, he was vain. He was quite mean, but I, th I thought he was a great broadcaster. Who's kidding who? They don't make him like Howard Cosell anymore. Howard Cosell, born in the state in 1918. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Aretha Franklin. Perhaps the greatest voice ever. The first female to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987, and on merit. It's all good music from the earliest recordings for Columbia in the early 1960s all the way to the end. The legendary Aretha Franklin, we miss her. Put on the music, you'll feel better. And Reginald Dwight is 77, Elton John. Huge Elton John fan. When I was a kid, he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as well. 77, happy birthday to Elton. Special thanks to our platinum sponsor, Alpine Air, for heat and air, call Alpine Air. You'll be glad you did. Special thanks to our other big time sponsors. That includes Pool to Spa Services on Worthen Street in Wenatchee. Not too late to maybe think about getting a pool this summer. I used to have one. They're pretty cool. And of course, Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista. If you blink, you're gonna miss Mike McNaughty's opinion. It's that quick. And then Casey Stafford had a chance to sit down with Bob Mast and Austin Allred about a pretty cool project that they're working on. You'll see that when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. We got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low. Mount Stewart Physical Therapy is all new. New staff, new therapists, and a fabulous new chiropractor. That's right, you do not need to drive to Wenatchee or Cashmere for your care. Come see Dr. Zolman, DC. No referral needed for most insurances. Open your auto and work injury claims with us or fax your post-op and Medicare therapy prescriptions to us right here in town. We offer covered pelvic floor services. We are premium health care for the Upper Valley. Improve your quality of life today. Mount Stewart Integrative Therapy and Chiropractic. Get the tax break you deserve this week at Walker's Furniture as they offer a double sales tax discount. 
or no money down special financing for up to five years with no minimum purchase. There's no better time to freshen up your living room, dine in style, or get that bedroom set you've always wanted. Plus, get a double sales tax discount or up to five years special financing with no money down. Making it the perfect time to match your tax return and spend less at Walker's. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. This is Mike Mandog Magnani, and I'm so full of crap, even I can't believe it sometimes. <laughs> The madness has started at the National RV Show. Being hosted once again at the Grant County Fairgrounds. March 20th through the 24th. Top manufacturers are coming from across the country. Like Grant Design, Flagstaff, Thor, Forest River, and SMC Horse Trade. Thanks on site with super low interest rates. Zero down and no payments till July. Enter to win 30000 in cash. Or a new 2023 StarCraft trailer. No purchase necessary. Shoot the basket and get an additional $500 off after you make your deal. The National RV Show has Grant Design, Flagstaff, and more. At the Grant County Fairgrounds. March 20th through the 24th. Hey, man. How's your arm? Uh, getting better, actually. Thanks. Did they give you anything for pain after surgery? Because I think I may have some left over. Nah, that's all right, man. Actually, me and my doctor talked about not sharing prescriptions, and that ibuprofen is a good option for me. The risk of addiction is not worth it. Makes sense. Take the next step. Don't share your prescriptions, and talk to your friends about the dangers of opioids. At Kennedy Group, we understand that buying and selling is more than a transaction, and it's more than just a house. This is where you will gather with friends and family and where a lifetime of memories will be made. But buying a home is more than memories. Oftentimes, it's your biggest financial decision. The agents at Kennedy Group understand this and provide real estate advice based on your goals and dreams. Call us today and let's find your happy place. Thank you so much for being here today, gentlemen. I really appreciate you coming in. Appreciate being here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Of course. So to begin, I'd love for you to explain to our viewers what exactly the Soil Center is. So the Soil Center basically uh, developed out of a, a process that we had going out at Royal Family Farms. And uh, honestly, when we first found out about the, the Royal Family Farms project that they were doing with the largest worm beds, quite possibly in the world, we were actually had a customer tour taking place and we needed some extra time in that tour and, and Austin and the All Red family said, well, why don't you come down and see what we're doing at the farm? So we went down and we saw the regenerative um, process with composting and everything that they were doing at, at Royal Family Farms and that turned into a whole strategic conversation about you know, this is fantastic. This supports our mission of being a company uh, that supports treating animals and, and the planet properly and being good stewards of animals and the land. That was at the forefront of what the All Red family was creating there. It was also at the forefront of what we believed in at CMI. Uh, the All Reds are part owners of CMI, so it, it turned into a real strategic uh, session of how can we take this thing to the next level. So uh, they were doing great work there with the worm beds and the, and the, the treating of compost, you know, and the, and the byproducts that come off of our apple orchards from the trees being chipped instead of being burnt going into the worm beds and the byproducts of all the row crops that they're they're planted with that becoming feed for the cattle of the operation and it it just supported the whole loop process of what we're trying to do and then the one piece that we weren't fully integrated and had the full loop process going on was the treatment of waste 
and you know waste from our packing houses waste from our potential uh, retail partners and we're like well how can we become an organization that really not only takes good care of the land not only takes good care of the animals but also is responsible with the waste from our facilities and that's really what brew into this whole process of let's take this to the next level let's dedicate a commitment of land to this process to purchasing equipment to pull off this system and let's put money into this. We didn't do it because of financial gain, uh, thinking that there's gonna be a lot of revenue generated out of this. It was more to be good stewards of the land and the animals and our business for a sustainable future. So when did the idea for the Soil Center come about? It's probably been uh, 18 months in the works. Yep. Uh, as far as the timing that we started working with CMI to to work together on these different tours and to show how the packing houses of the apples and cherries and pears work together with the soil, with the orchard, with the cattle, with the worms. Um, so all that included towards the strategic kind of outcome to where we are today. It's probably been a good 18 months. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to finally be at that pinnacle point of launching it and getting to talk about it and really begin to see it take off? In my opinion, it kind of feels like I've when I was a little kid at Christmas getting ready to open up that package you know just getting started in the process uh, there's a lot of equipment that's been ordered there's a lot of plans being drawn up right now um, obviously the equipment won't come as fast as we want it to uh, so we're we're just super excited about what the future is going to be uh, with a lot of a lot of anticipation that when this equipment comes to get the f process fully into place. There's a lot of things that are being done behind the scenes to get us there, but uh, you know, right now we've, we've made the commitment, we've made some purchases, and now we're just waiting for equipment to come to get it rolling. <laughs> so I understand that the Soil Center will have a physical location. Has a property or anything been established yet for that? Initially, uh, it'll be there in Royal City, um, kind of in a pretty central location to the orchards, to the cattle, to the worms, um, to where the wood chips are going to be coming from. It's going to be uh, in Royal City in, uh, in just a couple miles from where, the, where a lot of those feedstocks are coming from. Perfect. So how do you see the Soil Center making a significant change in the sustainable agricultural industry? Just the great responsibility we have to close our loops. Um, and to be able to do that at a scale is something that we haven't really cracked the code yet for. You have a lot of good regenerative systems that are pretty small scale, which is fantastic. That's where we learn a lot of our, that's where the R&D is done. Um, but in this instance, we're, we're really excited to be able to close loops just all over the place. First and foremost, the one that's just is kind of glaring uh, in the apple industry right now is the fact that industry-wide we still burn the majority of our trees when they retire um, so the soil center at, at the very beginning stages is going to be able to eliminate that um, but then but then diving into the other loops of our, our waste from the compostable waste coming out of the, the different uh, packing plants and even the compostable waste coming out of our retailers and the food waste coming out of retailers rolling that into a closed loop so that we can support soil instead of landfills. Um, and that's really what this all boils down to is taking that carbon, which no matter the conversation, carbon is valuable in soil. Carbon is not valuable in the air once it gets past a certain point. But in soil, carbon is valuable. So at the end of the day, everything the Soil Center is gonna be trying to focus on is when we have a carbon source, which as most people know, most things are carbon sources. If it originated from life, it is a carbon source. So you cardboard, food, all these carbon sources. We want to make a home for those that can be put into a really prescriptive um, amendment for soils and to get that back into our soil because getting the carbon back into the soil is only a positive. So you specifically mentioned retiring trees from the tree fruit industry and things. So I understand that those will be turned into wood chips and then composted using worms? So we'll have a few strategies. Um, we have, as, as Bob said, a large worm farm, which will take a portion of those wood chips 
And that worm farm is primarily focused on filtering water. So every year we'll take new wood chips, put them in beds, filter millions of gallons of water, harvest those wood chips which are now digested by worms and filled with nutrients from that dirty water and that will be another feedstock for the compost going back to the soil. Um, another portion of those wood chips are going to be going into biochar. So biochar is kind of a new, it's, it's an old, 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 old process, but it's really just getting new fame and new traction. Um, and we're excited to, to bring biochar into that mix. Would you mind explaining exactly what biochar is? I mean, I know I'm unfamiliar with that term, and I, I bet that people would love to hear exactly what that is. Did you ask the PhD chemist who came right before me the same question? I did not. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it, but he can do it better. Um, biochar is a process where you take, you take a carbon source and, and you prowl it. You take a carbon source and you, it's not burning it exactly, but you're going to extract the carbon in a controlled way so you don't lose that carbon. And then you're going you're gonna to create a product called biochar, which now becomes a sponge for new carbon, a life source for new carbon. So as soon as you create biochar from wood chips, you have, it looks like ash, you have a pile of, it's not ash, but you have a pile of biochar, which now becomes a sponge for new life to, to be attracted to, to create, and that can be taken to your soils to then facilitate and enhance life in soils. Wow, that's When really you're actually pulling carbon out of the air to do that. It's an incredible product. Yeah, I understand why it's why you said it's kind of resurfacing, it's getting its proper fame and recognition. Now it sounds like it's full of incredibly useful opportunities. For sure, when you have soil, and it's a it's a it's also a, a quicker way to treat waste than what we're currently doing with the composting system. There's some some of the things that we take out of the packing house we're putting through the compost system. For example, a perfect example is the 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 apple stickers that we put on the apples. Um, to identify the variety for the consumer in the cash register, you know, for the for the cashier at the register, when they go through the register, we take those sticker backings and they're going through our composting system, and in you know a matter of weeks, months, that totally dissipates. And it's <clears throat> there's some products that don't dissipate as quickly, aren't as easy to dissipate that you can take through the waste system of the biochar that can get treated quicker and you know kind of struggle through the composting system so we're really trying to set up a system where we can pretty much treat any waste that we're bringing out of our facilities and just create a total sustainable future because our, our overall goal is to not ever burn another tree to chip every tree that we take out and we we usually replenish five to ten percent of our trees every year whether it's going to a new variety a new root stock uh, a different location um, so we've got those wood chips naturally we bought a couple different wood chipping machines because you have to chip them to a certain size and you know the perfect ingredient for the worm farms but then coming out of the packing house all the waste and byproducts there it's kind of we already were in a rethinking process about developing packaging that is compostable and earth friendly to begin with for our retail customers and the end consumers so that they could you know compost them but now we're looking at it from a waste removal from our our system too from our packing houses and creating products that can go through that waste system more efficiently so tell me now that the soil center has officially launched what exciting projects or things are you eager to get started on that you see on the horizon what we're looking to do is you know we're creating soil amendments that can come back to the farms and you know our, our number one goal is to try to treat all of the you know CMI families we have four families that make up the ownership of CMI treat all the CMI orchards with these soil amendments all of our growers that come to us but also supply part of the industry with these soil amendments and then the other piece is you know retail piece of it is there are there goods that can be taken to the retail marketplace and you know be used for consumers and you know when a consumer can say look I bought these apples 
from this particular shipper and this is a byproduct of the apples that now I'm putting on my garden to feed my garden. You know, that's the full loop process that we're looking to achieve. That's great, Austin. Did you have anything to add to that? It's just exciting um, to add, I mean, the projects that, that, make, that, that make this, the aspects that make this project so exciting is the diversity that all adds to it. You have the orchards, you have the worms, you have biochar, you have ruminants, and working those systems in a natural symbiosis is what makes this work. And so I think, as Bob alluded to, the goal and the concept is to just treat our soils the very best we can, to reduce our dependency on imports, on outside soil amendments, synthetic fertilizers, and, and, and the like. So that is the ultimate goal of the soil center, to make sure that the farmers, the, the, the four families that own CMI, have a regenerative, sustainable system in this, in this a localized system to be able to continue to grow apples and cherries and other products for years to come. Um, and that doesn't happen without a diverse, without, without this, this, this network of working together, without the orchard farmers working with the cattle farmers, working with the worm farmers, working with the compost, and, and closing that whole loop, closing that whole process. And that's really the project that just, I think, gets us all giddy, is to be able to not just eliminate our biggest expense on the farm, because soil health will always be the big, biggest expense on farms. Just like when I grow cattle, feeding those cattle is always going to be my biggest expense. So the soil center is going to help, help adjust that expense within a localized system. And we, we also have local um, customers, local retailers that are looking for ways to treat their waste better too and looking for an outlay for that. So, you know, if we deliver a load of apples and can bring back their waste and find a solution for them to be able to, you know, check that box of sustainability for their business, that's that's a plus as well. Yeah, for sure. So as we begin to kind of draw to a close here, I do just want to give you each a moment to talk about your individual organizations. So Bob, I understand that CMI Orchards recently underwent a merger with Star Ranch, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that and how that's been going. Yeah, so it's a it's kind of a full circle uh, coming back together because uh, two of our owners, uh, Columbia Fruit Packers and McDougal and, McDougal and Sons, was originally part of uh, the Oneana uh, Sales and Marketing Group. And back in 1989, uh, they got to a scope in their business where they felt that you know they were large enough they could go out, start their own sales and marketing entity. So in 1989, those two entities, those two families pulled away and created CMI. So. Now here we are, fast forward, you know, several years later, we're coming back together. Uh, that was our theme when we came back together as a group, is better together. We've looked at our business models. Uh, we looked at uh, the facilities that they had, the facilities we had, the products they bring to market, the timing of those, and it was just a, it was a complete natural fit to come back together as a group and, you know, increase the scope of our business. Um, in turn, we ended up, you know, becoming probably the world's largest pear shipper uh, with about 25% of the Northwest uh, product on, on pears. Uh, we've gotten to a large percentage of the cherry market and substantially upgraded our, our apple marketing as well and brought on several of the, the key employees. We tried to retain as much staff as we could through the, uh, through the coming together process. And you know, we, we just have an incredible staff that's come together. We had one A team, now we've got two A teams that we've put together and just really increased our scope of business and, and the efficiencies that we have and, and the correlation of where their facilities, packing houses were located in conjunction to ours. I mean, most of them are right next door to CMI facilities now. So from a logistical standpoint, it made absolute sense from a philosophy standpoint to company owned, uh, family owned company businesses coming together, you know, families coming together to form a, a larger group, it just made a lot of sense. So it's, it's just been a great marriage. 
That's great. I'm happy to yeah. hear that it's been going so well for you guys. Mm -hmm. And Austin, I'm going to give you a moment here to talk about Royal Family Farming and what exactly the mission is and what you guys do for everybody in the community. I like Bob's better together mentality. I, I haven't ever put it that concise because <laughs> I don't ever put anything concise, unfortunately. <laughs> but that's what Royal Family Farming is, is this idea that better together. Um, and the the my family, the Allred family, is potato farmers, apple farmers, dairy farmers, and ranchers, all individual, but working together. And so we're trying to, and now with CMI, just taking that to a whole new level of, of bringing all those diverse agriculture organizations into a system that support each other in the natural symbiosis that allows us to have healthier soils and a more sustainable future, uh, reducing our dependency on outside synthetic sources in order to, to, to grow our crops and to grow our, our food for people. Blippi's back on stage with his brand new wonderful world tour. Are you ready? I'm an excavator. Sing, dance, and make new discoveries. In Blippi, the wonderful world tour with special guest Mika. My name is Mika. Yeah, it's nice to meet ya. For tickets and more, visit BlippiOnTour.com. Blippi, the wonderful world tour. I chose Pinnacles because they embrace and lift people with different learning styles. It's a school where I can be myself, creative, and be successful. There's a lot of hands-on activity and... You get to really connect with the community here because we're all one. We get to see each other often. It's a small building. The teachers care about you and make sure there is equity in the classroom. They take care of them as a whole. They see them as a name, not a number. Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food. Freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Well, just about an hour ago when this show started, it was 36 degrees, the show is almost over, and it's 30, 36 degrees. Hasn't really changed very much. A lot of unsettled weather this week. Until we get really to Friday, we're going to see a little bit of everything. We're going to have some cooler than normal temperatures, going to have some rain, going to have some wind, going to have some sun. We're going to be all over the place. No real day is going to be like the day before until we get to the weekend. In fact, of course, it is Holy Week with Easter weekend. Uh, earlier than normal, it's, you know, they go by the moon. Uh, it's going to be really nice, very, very, uh, very pleasant weekend. But we got to get there first. From the National Weather Service, one more look at your forecast. Increasing clouds as the day progresses. Right now, it's lots of sunshine. That's going to change as the clouds begin to ease their way into the Wenatchee Valley. By late this afternoon, it will be cloudy. And a high of 55 degrees. Clouds tonight, a lot warmer, 39. For the overnight low, of course, the cloud cover will keep the blanket on, make us a little warmer in the wee small hours of the morning. The big story tomorrow is going to be the wind. Quite windy at times, sustained winds at about 10 to 15 miles an hour, west wind, gusts above 20 at times on Tuesday, so get ready for some windy conditions there. And the high about normal, about 56. Tuesday night, clouds roll back in, 36 for the overnight low. It's also going to be windy Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Wednesday looks pretty raw, rain most of the day, most of it in the afternoon hours, and look how cold it's going to get, 47 for the afternoon high. Our normal high is 56, so 
Wednesday looks cold and rainy, but then look at Easter weekend, especially Saturday and Sunday. Highs will be in the 60s with bountiful sunshine. And that's it for us. Have a great Monday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Live It Up, the show where we explore and discuss how to take your life to that next level and beyond. We cover health, wealth, relationships, and how to create a life that feels good. Because after all, that's what we want. We want to feel good. I'm your host and coach, Fletcher Ellingson. So glad you're here. Today on the show, we'll be visiting with Jerry Smith of North Central Washington Mediation. We'll be talking about something I believe is very valuable, and that is mediation. What is it? Who is it for? How does it work? Hey, let's face it. Sometimes we get to a place in our personal or professional relationships where 